everybody, Golden Era Bookham here, and today I have the pleasure of introducing a new series of interviews with the Black Hulk, Bill Richardson, who took the bodyboarding world by storm in the late 70s and early 80s, capturing many coveted titles, as well as strongman titles, and going down in bodybuilding history as one of the strongest bodybuilders to have ever graced the Mr. Universe stage. Bill recently turned 74, so in many ways this video also serves as a belated birthday wish to Bill, so happy birthday Bill Richardson. In this series of interviews, Bill describes some of his incredible strength feats, as well as stories of the bodybuilding legends, his workout style and diet, and much, much more. In this first episode, we hear from Bill Richardson as I question him on his strongman records and arm wrestling days. Enjoy. Anymore, if you call me sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what can I call you? My name, <laughs> Bill. Thank you. Hi, Bill. Um, so, Bill Richardson. Wow, I can't believe you're on my uh, channel. Um, I just sent Tibor a uh, photo. As you can see, I may not have your book, um, but I've been reading lots about you um, over the years. <laughs> that's I've actually that's got that's the Mr. Britain? Yes. What? The first one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think that's the, lift you up a little bit, lift you up a little bit. This one, second one. I think uh, around about the same time. Around about the same time. Late 1978, yeah. 1979. Yeah. And of course, your. That, that, that is, that's uh, the universe. The universe, Tony, yeah. Tony Pearson <laughs> and Eric Mess. And again, and also the same one. <laughs> You've only got two. No, no, I've got others downstairs. I just uh, thought I, I'd show you some of the best ones I've got. They're, they're some of your best covers. I obviously have many more. That's um, good. That's very nice. That's very nice. <laughs> um, so, Bill, uh, you really, um, I guess, took took the bodybuilding world by storm in the late seventies and early eighties. That was really your your peak time. Um, no I peak, yeah. Um, can I ask how old are you now? You look so young, and I'm, I'm just amazed at how you look. So I'm two really... months, I'm 74. Wow! Oh my God. <laughs> Your fantastic genetics. You look better than me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you old people. <laughs> no, you old people. Oh, man. So, um, yeah, I'm actually turning 43, but you look fantastic for 70. Oh, you're a baby. You're a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and you're living in Belgium right now? In Belgium, yeah. I've been, Belgium, I've been in Belgium for the last 34 years. Nice. Um, and your work now, your work is with Black Hulk, um, what's it called, the company? Black Hulk Fitness? Black, no, that's me. Okay. The Black Hulk, the Black Hulk was a nickname I, I inherited in the 70s. Okay, yes. In the well, 70s, you had the Green Hulk. Yes, of course. <laughs> and I, I was the Black Hulk. Right. The boys in the gym named me the Black Hulk. Yeah. Because the amount of weights I used to train with. Yes. I mean, in your spare time, you used to wheelbarrow over one ton, so, you know. <laughs> well, one and a quarter ton. <laughs> up as well, did you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, and I mean. I, mean <laughs> I, I like the arm wrestling, the arm wrestling as well. Yeah. I, was at, I was at the Britain or the UK and they, they came this woman and from the television looking for strong men mm -hmm. with left arm. Okay. So I'm right handed. <laughs> I said, I, I'm, I'm okay. She says, no, no, we're only looking for left handed. I said, I've got two arms. <laughs> exactly. I know nothing about arm wrestling. Nothing. Something new for me. But it was a challenge. And? Well, I won. Of course you won. <laughs> of course. And the year, the year later, I won the right hand. <laughs> and the year later, I won the left hand, the right hand again. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so let's get to, um, so you're working now as a trainer? Uh, this is my gym. Your gym? Yeah. In, in, Bel gym. in Belgium, in, Belgium, in yeah. Budapest, is that right? In, in, in Belgium. In Antwerp. In Antwerp. Yeah. And you, you're the trainer there? Yeah, I'm the trainer. I'm the man. Yeah, you're the That's man, awesome. right? I mean, uh, you work with one of the most famous young up-and-comers in in, uh, in bodybuilding right now, Peter Molnar. So Peter Molnar. Peter Molnar. 
Yeah. You must be very, fun. very proud that he got a ticket for the Mr. Oh, o. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. He well done. <laughs> he calls me a gentleman, and I, I know he's a gentleman. He's a very, very nice person. Yes, he is. A um, very nice person. I can't say I've had the pleasure of, of um, ever well, meeting him. Try, try and contact him. He's a very nice person. Yeah, I'll let him know. I, I mean, recently I've been... Because I really enjoy what's going on with bodybuilding nowadays with classic physique, um, I'm kind of trying to also, because my channel is all about old school bodybuilding, as you can t tell, right. I'm a collector. Old of, school bodybuilding and classic yeah. physique and everything else. They yeah. call it classic physique. Yeah. You know, I call it bodybuilding because yes. all these poses come from us. We did all these poses in one yeah. contest. Yeah. You know, <laughs> And now they, they separated all of them because uh, of the big belly bodybuilders uh, yes. you know all the growth hormones and everything else that they take and all the insulin and something th stupid things like this that they take mm. that's very stupid yes could, could no. we have the the computer or phone a little bit more I, so you, yeah that's better great <laughs> yeah i mean um i started the channels just so you know a little bit more about me uh based on Years and years ago, I, I got into bodybuilding in my 20s, so we're talking 20, 25 years ago, and um, I was disappointed in trying a lot of the routines because I was a beginner, and I started reading a lot of old bodybuilding literature, and that's when I started made, making gains, and of course, my literature sure. grew and grew uh, cool. using the techniques that you guys did, and uh, that's basically how my channel started. Since then, I've been interviewing a lot of the legends and now I've got you on, so it's fantastic. The legends know everything. The yes. The younger generation, I'm sorry to say, the younger generation takes big shortcuts, big shortcuts. Mm -hmm. You know, they think that they have to use the gear uh, to gain. Mm. They forget the food is more important than the gear. Yes, very true. I'm talking about, I'm talking about this because I always like to get this shit out of the way because mm -hmm. um, most, most of the time, Everybody always wait for the juicy end and they, they spring a question you about anabolic or something like this, you know, mm -hmm. steroids and stuff like this. So, you know, I'm going to talk about it now, if you don't mind. Okay. If you don't mind, because we talk about the younger generation. The younger generation looks at someone like me and they think, oh, he must have took a lot of stuff to get like this. Mm. Honestly and truly, I want the universe without taking anything. It was at the universe that I learned about steroids when I wanted to go professional. And a couple of boys from Holland were selling steroids. I didn't even know what the hell it was. I know about Stromber because they talk, I had to talk about Stromber. Remember, I'm older and we had a lot of story. I lived in Leeds at the time, in England. I lived in Leeds at the time. And there's only one bodybuilder that I know came out of Leeds besides me at the time. That was Reg Parks. Mm -hmm. And I started my, my training in Reg Park's gym. I really? Anything about, I don't, anabolics, I didn't know anything about anabolics. Well, he didn't believe in them. We, we were f afraid of them. We hear this guy's taking this, this guy's taking, but we're afraid of them. Because, you know, we, we're, I'm big, I'm fruity, and you know, I like women, you know. And I said, look, your dick will fall off. <laughs> 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 believe me, I'm honest. <laughs> Things like this, you know, you get this. And we were afraid of these things. Mm. But the, the upcoming bodybuilders, they was into this. And like we went to Europe and everything like this. Oh, they first look for the, the chemists to find out where they can buy it because they can buy it straight over the county in, the, in Europe, France, Holland, uh, Germany, everywhere, all these countries. They could buy it at the time freely, mm. you know, and uh, we were just afraid of them, you know. So you're saying that you never took steroids or yes. that you took them later? I'm not saying I never took them. Okay. I tried them. I'm not very lucky with them. I tried them, but I'm afraid of them. I tried them after I won the universe. Okay. Well, we'll get to that a little bit later. Yeah. Um, but thanks for already addressing that. Um, yeah. I think that's going to put a lot of things in perspective. Yeah. Um, so... You know, uh, I guess we'll talk about Peter another day because of, he's another whole story. Um, he's a legend already. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, let, let's talk about yourself. Um, what got you into the Iron Game? Like, could you 
kind of go chronologically throughout your young years? What was it that really? I, 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 can, I can tell you. I can tell you directly. I can tell you directly. I started sport at a very young age. I came mm -hmm. from the Caribbean. I came from an island called Saint Kitts. Okay, and we had assembly every morning. We had to do springs, jack knives, and things like that every morning before we went into the assembly. So, and sport, gymnastics, and football, and uh, cricket was at the time, cricket and things like that. We had to do sport. It wasn't, we couldn't choose, we had to do school, sports. That was one of the curriculum. We had to do sports. And, uh, you know, I did always sport. And then uh, at nine years old, I went to England. And I had a bit of uh, a problem with, with my colour. Look, I went to an all-boys school, mm -hmm. and it's like standing in this floor, and one little hole, one little piss hole, put it that way, in the snow. And I was the only black person in the school. Yeah. You know. And I, I, I was terrified mm. from the bullies, because uh, I got bullied, and uh, my father was a very hard person. You know, so I went home crying and I had to go back to school. You know, the teachers didn't care much about me. Yeah. One thing I was good at was sport. And in school, they have teams. Sorry to say it like this. To get in one of the teams, you have to be better than the best one in the team. And you're welcome. Mm -hmm. That didn't bother me. I, was, I had friends. Mm -hmm. So I did sports at school, sports at school, swimming, high diving. I'm a qualified, fully, I'm a qualified swimming instructor and lifesaver. Nice. Okay, as well. And then um, we had friends, went to these local coffees, coffee houses, drink a cup of coffee. Now, with all my experience of fighting at school, defending myself, <laughs> The boys that was older than me was also my friends. Right. But they couldn't hit me anymore because I was hitting them. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens is one of the boys, he said to me, come and train with me. I said, training? I'm not lifting any iron. I don't want to lift iron. What, what the, what I'm going to get out iron. Then one day he tricked me, he says, I'm going to go to the gym, okay, and uh, because I forgot my bag there, I went to the gym, and he introduced me to this Red Parts gym, to the trainer there. We were doing all the sports at school, running, athletics, and everything else. Uh, how very physique-wise? Marga, look, stringy, physique, muscles, mm -hmm. okay? The guy looked at me and said, there's a contest coming up in two months. Mr. Yorkshire, novice. He says, uh, you can win that. I said, oh, go to hell. Well, I took the chance and I did it. And I won it. That was the biggest mistake I made. <laughs> Why is that? I won the contest. It was so easy winning the contest. Mm -hmm. But I won only with the little boys. <laughs> yeah. The next year I was direct in the, in the big boys club. Mm. Instead of me coming first place, I came la last place. And don't forget, there was 30 people and you come last. And that's not <laughs> No. And I'm, I'm afraid to say this as well. Whether I was better or not, there was a lot of prejudice in those days. You know, not that I'm prejudiced or I, I was bothered about it because uh, I used to go in places where it says on the door, uh, no dogs, no blacks. Yeah. I can but, imagine. Yeah, but, but listen to me. I was in that place eating. Because I was one of us. You're one of us. Yeah. This isn't a colour anymore. Mm. So I was, I'm not bothered about racism. Racism don't, don't um, grow with me. I'm not mm. bothered about racism. You know, you have to stand your own ground and defend your own self. Yes. So uh, I was always the, the man. I learned to box, I learned Aikido, swimming, mm -hmm. Kung Fu, you know, I did a lot of things at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
I was bodybuilding and I was going to the boxing club after bodybuilding. You know, things like that. I was learning the keto, bodybuilding, football, all the same day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, sport was my life that got me out of trouble when I was younger and it kept me out of trouble all my life. Especially when I started doing bodybuilding because at this time I developed a bad temper. Mm. And the bodybuilding calmed me down. That's really interesting. That's the best. Me that's the best medicine I ever had. You have a bad temper. Yes. Got a big mouth. Not a bad temper. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Um, you mentioned uh, you went and trained at Reg Park's gym. Yeah. Did you meet Reg Park? Yes, I met Reg Park. Several and? times. How was he? Good. All the old bodybuilders are bodybuilders. Yeah. No jealousy. We're all friends. Yeah. Steve Reeves, Wes Parks, <laughs> Bill Pearl, um, uh, Frank Zane, uh, oh, Bob Paris, all of them. We're all friends. Yeah. All friends. Did you, you said um? So you met you've met Reg Park. Did he actually uh, was he your trainer at no. the time? No. no, no. No, he didn't. He wasn't involved in my training. My first training came with one body, one weightlifter, and two powerlifters. That was my training. One weightlifter, you know, and they killed me. I bet they did. <laughs> they killed me because I was the man. They, when I met these guys, I was nothing. <laughs> yeah, my imagine. ambition was to beat them. Oh, yeah. My determination, very big. Yeah. I got closer and closer, and the day I overtook him, he never catch me again. He never awesome. me again. Never. You you trained in Reg Park's gym. Was that during the nineteen sixties then? No, this is seventies. I started in the seventies, mate. You, With, you started in the seventies. Okay. Seventies. Seventy. Sixty-nine, seventy. Okay. Yeah. Um. Did you have an idol at the time, or was it just you? You. They were all my idols. I'll tell you yeah. why. All my idols. I had to learn to pose. I had no one to teach me. Leading leads. There's no one in leads to teach me to pose. So I would get a photograph of uh, like um, Frank Zane. What's the pose that he did? And practice that pose every single day. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sergio Bray. Practice his pose. Sergio Olivia, practice his pose. Okay? All these top bodybuilders, you know, I didn't know these guys. Mm -hmm. I met them for the first time in 1971. Besides, 1971, they were the first time when I went to the first universe. Yeah. You know? I was going to ask friend, about that. Yeah. I had a friend of mine who knew all these guys, and his idol was Bill Pearl. But he, he, he was afraid to to ask him for an autograph. We're afraid to talk to him. I said, what are you talking about, Fred? He's only a man. Yeah. I went over and introduced myself to him and everything else. Uh, yes. Also was there was um, uh, Robbie, yeah. Robbie Robinson. And there were also Be uh, um, Albert Beckles. All these people was there. Mm. You know. Um. Okay, so did you uh, practice? Like, let's let's go now into your strongman time and, and arm wrestling. Did that come before the bodybuilding at all, or was that just with it? That came between the bodybuilding. Yeah, I figured. I, I was um, the old bodybuilders was unique. They were just, they weren't just muscles. They were also strong men. Yeah, back then. Also strong men. Mm -hmm. Yes. And every bodybuilding show, we had an artist of strong man or something mm -hmm. like that. Either lifting an anvil or lifting a, a anchor, blowing hot water bottles up. Yep. And things like this, you know. And I practice all these. Mm. They, asked, they asked someone to come on stage to try it. But well, they were surprised when I got on stage because if it killed me, I would do it. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, it's different the, back then. Determination. Determination. Yeah. The determination was there. Yeah, I mean, I've seen the photos and videos of Franco Colombo blowing up a water bottle, Bill Pearl bending, tearing nails. N- yeah, bending, bending nails. nails and bending oh. nails, making making the chain out of nails. Bending yes, the nails and making the chain out of them. I did all that. Yeah, I mean, you guys did all that, and as you said, like back then, it wasn't just muscles; it was strength, it was showmanship, Thank it you. it was. Uh, an art, an art. I, I, I did, uh, I went to, I went to um, Billingham in, in North Yorkshire. I went there to do a show for cancer research. Mm-hmm. And for this young boy who had cancer, he was nine years old. And we were trying to collect, they were trying to collect money for this young boy for the medicine from Switzerland, interfering or something like that, I think they called it at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, cancer. I'm so ignorant, I didn't even know what cancer was. And I saw this young boy, and you see a young boy, nine years old, he's running about, breaking things and everything else. This boy was like this. And I was even afraid to, to pick him up, because I think, if I pick him up, I'm going to get cancer. <laughs> That's how ignorant I was, you understand? Yeah. You know? Yeah, but I did it. I collected the money, and one of them was... I, I went round and round the circuits, went down the gyms and everything else uh, with a hot water bottle. Uh, there's a dumbbell called the Thomas Inch dumbbell. Yes. Okay. I, I had that dumbbell on my own. Lifting that dumbbell, pushing the beer bottle with my head. And the beer bottle was a trick. I was collecting money for the boy. Mm-hmm. Most of these things were done with weightlifters, bodybuilders, and strong men. So we'll ask, I would ask six people to come on the stage to lift this barrel. Mm-hmm. You know? But I'm a bit of a villain. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many times I did it. They were sponsoring me, these guys. Mm-hmm. Now, if someone said, I'll sponsor you 10 pence, 50 pence, a pound, I start seeing pounds in my head. <laughs> the one that offered the most money, I asked him to come on the stage. These are big guys. They're not small guys. Huh? They're all weightlifters and powerlifters and things like this. I asked him to lift, the, lift this thing. Mm-hmm. And they were struggling to lift it. So, I get on the stage and I started a comedy show. I blow a hot water bottle up, hot water bottle up. Okay, I lift this dumbbell up, then I took the bot, took the dump, the barrel of it, the, the beer barrel, okay? Mm-hmm. And, um, <laughs> but the trouble is, I could do it more than a hundred times. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> that was the trouble. <laughs> yeah. That was the trouble. So, <laughs> 100, 100 kilo, 100 times. 100 kilo, 100 times. <laughs> That's crazy. And these other guys were struggling just to lift it. Yeah. Far out. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the hands. Look. These yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, got, he's, he's a yeah, monster. <laughs> Yeah. The Black Hulk. <laughs> yeah, Black Hulk. That's why. That's why I got my name. Yeah, you can imagine. Of, you know. Wow. I bench, I bench was three hundred kilo from the problem. How much? Three hundred kilo. Three hundred bench press. Yes. <laughs> In public. Yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> Without a warm up. <laughs> In public. Um, wow. Well, I mean, so. Let's go into your, uh, actually, I want to go into your strongman stunts. Like, what were you most famous for? Everything. What could you do? So you've talked about blowing up hot water bottles, bench pressing 300 kilos, lifting 100 kilogram barrels over your head hundreds of times. Pulling a wagon. Pulling a wagon. Pulling a wagon. Yeah. Things like this. Getting hit with a sledgehammer in my stomach. Wow. Things like this, you know. 
people jumping on my stomach when I'm doing sit-ups. And I don't mean little boys. I mean 100 kilo men. <laughs> you know? The, 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 the sledgehammer, hit him in the stomach with a sledgehammer, we're also to collect money. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> you, hit me with a, you have to pay me one pound to hit me in my stomach with a sledgehammer. As hard as you want. As hard as you want. Just one pound. <laughs> that, I guess well, that, one... Was, that was a lot of money for charity yeah. those days. You know? That was a lot of money. That's true. You get 10 men, that's 10 pounds. Yeah, that's true. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to talk about your Guinness World Record? Uh, mm-hmm. How did that come about? In the auction, they had a, another top bodybuilder called Tony Emmett. Yes. Tony Emmett he was a friend of mine. We trained together sometime. He had a gym in Ilkley. Mm-hmm. And um, he was supposed to do this uh, uh, Guinness book to, mm-hmm. to try and make the records, you see? Yeah. Now, I went to California to do a, a contest in California, Mr. California. I won the contest. And I came off the airplane in Leeds and Bradford Airport. And these guys were waiting for me to ask me to I'm tempted. You know? That's a ton, ton. The record was, I, I beat the record by 300, 300 kilos, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's 1979. Yeah. So what happens is this. We had only two weeks to do this. Okay. Yeah. So you were told, and in two weeks you had to do it. Two weeks I had to do it. Okay. And you'd never done it before. No. So you didn't even practice. My God. I practiced. Well, okay. The first time I practiced, we tried with a rubber wheel. It's cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I bet. With, with a normal wheel, you know? With the yeah, yeah. Second time with a solid rubber wheel. That went. But uh, we left the weight on the next day and had a flat a flat tire, you so say, because the amount of weight made the, the rubber flat. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. You end up using an iron, an iron, iron wheel up an iron wheel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I've seen the photo. Yeah, I've seen the photo, and uh, it was published in 1980. Yeah, when you um, when you 1980, when I won the universe. Yes, it was a very good year for me. Yes, it was a great year. Yeah, so it was the over. Universe, a... I won the European champion twice and everything. It was a very, very good year for me. Yeah. So, you, so you um, wheelbarrowed that ton of bricks. How many well, meters was that? Uh, well, 10 meters of, uh, no, yeah, about 10 meters, something like that. Oh, cool, it's a, no. one hell of a, one ton, jeez, can't even think of it. Um, what other strongman feats were you famous for? Famous for because I trained people to do the strongman contests here mm-hmm. in Belgium. Okay. And everything they do, I had to do. Yeah, well, that's the only way you can train them. Like pushing the camp, a full, fully loaded camion. I'm not talking about a, a small uh, truck, you know? Yeah, yeah. About a big, big truck. A lorry. Loaded, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How, how many tons are they? Uh, how many tons, I don't know. I don't remember. I don't recall the, the, the amount of weight, but, uh, you know, we have to look that up officially to see what's, you know, but it's... They're bloody heavy. Yeah. <laughs> with a trailer, right? Not the camion, with a trailer, right? Yeah. The trailer. So you are, I mean, wow. I once, I, 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 once, I once went to do this, to trade this guy who, who won the contest in an area called Flandre in uh, Belgium. Mm-hmm. And they call, they do the strongest man from Flandre. And I trained this guy and he actually won that three times. And we had a, a camion driver a truck driver that came here to train and uh, we could use his truck to pull these uh, to, to, to pull mm-hmm. so we went to this area where the, the, the neighbor came out because I'm shouting I'm shouting he came out and it, to see what was going on and they have a saying here in Belgium in my time I was also so strong I said in your time he says, I'm older than you. 
So what do you mean your time? He's about 10 years younger than me, I said to the guy. Mm -hmm. I was about 60 at the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, wow. Yeah. You know? <sighs> so all, all these exercises I did before. You know? I had challenges from everyone, even in the gym here. I have dumbbells in my gym. It goes from one kilo to 70 kilo mm -hmm. each. Yeah. The 70 kilo, I could base, I could dumbbell press 70, 30, 40 times with those weights. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm a big head. <laughs> it's, not, it's not imaginable, is it? Well, no, I'm just doing the calculations and I'm now understanding how you could push a 100 kilogram barrel over 100 times if you could handle over 140 kilos, which is much more unstable yeah. when split in two, 30 to 40 times. So yeah. that's consistent yeah. and incredible, of course. Yeah. That's okay. why they call me the black hole. Yes, I was just going to say. Um, <laughs> incredible. So that was my first part of my recent interview with Bill Richardson, who, as we have heard, is of Caribbean descent and began bodybuilding in Leeds, England, at nine years of age after being bullied. At school, he excelled at sports such as self-defense, football, swimming. He was an overall excellent athlete and became even a lifesaver. He started training at Reg Park's gym with weightlifters, powerlifters, and bodybuilders in the late 60s and early 70s. And I think one of the things that struck me the most about this first part of the interview is that Bill identified golden era bodybuilders as strongmen. Bill's list of achievements were amazing, being able to blow up hot water bottles, press a 100 kilogram barrel over 100 times, the ability to bench press 300 kilos, uh, things like, you know, crazy things like you know, getting a sledgehammer smashed into his stomach, performing a Guinness World Record, that is wheelbarrowing, one ton of bricks, only having practiced it for two weeks, being able to pull a lorry, performing, you know, 30 to 40 rep dumbbell bench presses with 70 kilogram dumbbells. And God knows what else. I mean, these men back then truly were of Herculean strength. These were truly amazing athletes. So if you have enjoyed this first interview with Bill, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so. And please leave me your comments. What do you think of the Black Hulk, Bill Richardson? I personally think that the man is pretty amazing and it's not hard to believe his statements, especially about you know, how strong he was with or without steroid usage as that kind of strength can't be bought in a bottle. Anyway, that's it from me. Hope you enjoy the video. This is the golden era bookworm saying bye for now. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for all the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platts, and Larry Scott, and much, much more, and select your poster now. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has, I mean, there's so much stuff that probably hasn't been proven by science, and it will take science to prove or disprove uh, Vince, but to be honest, these three books I believe, which I call the classic physique bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Deronda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles. But how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14-month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises, and believe me, it's a brilliant, brilliant program. Many people have used it. I know I know personally a lot of uh, bodybuilders that have actually used it and uh, f made fantastic results with it. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just these, these three books, as I call it, the classic physique bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com. Now, the Pro Series of Bodybuilding, which was targeted for professional bodybuilders, is a contains six programs, each of which go for two months each, so it's a whole year, uh, again, in preparation for competition. 
To support your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. To take full advantage of my collaborations, use code GEB20 with nspnutrition.com and vincegeronda.com as well as code bookworm12 at osl.com for a discount at checkout.